Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is July 13th, Saturday at 6 a.m. I hope everyone is slowly waking up, drinking yeah. their coffee. And Good Sarah, morning. It, it felt really nice walking outside. Yeah. And I know it's still humid. It's not like, it's not the coolest, but I will mm -hmm. take it on a July 13th. Let me tell you, yesterday was great. It was on and off again rain for many locations. Now, of course, because of the weather pattern we're in, it's kind of luck of the draw. Some people missed out. Some people got a good amount of rain, and today's going to be very similar. As you look outside right now with the authority radar, we've only got a couple of spotty showers here and there. These showers and storms today are going to be fueled by the daytime heat, how much sunshine we see. And so as we go throughout the day, there is going to be a better chance for rain during the afternoon during the peak heat of the day. Right now outside though, it's 75 degrees in San Antonio. Good morning, Bernie. It's 70, 73 in Castroville. It's 74 in Seguin, 73 in Poteet and 72 in Yavaldi. And as for this weekend, a 40% chance for you to see some rain today in your backyard. A few showers and storms during the afternoon. Not enough to cancel your weekend outdoor plans, but enough to let you know you might want to have a backup plan to quickly duck inside as a passing shower or storm works its way through. Only 90 for the high today because there will be a little extra clouds and that 40% chance of rain. Notice tomorrow our rain chances are a lot less, 20%. It'll be 93 though for the high, so not too hot. Now, this, these temperatures this weekend, much better than what we were dealing with this time last year. I'm going to show you how much better the temperatures are this year than this time last year. Coming up in just a bit, Sarah. Sarah, thank you. Roughly 1 million Texas customers are still without power after Hurricane Burrell as of yesterday. So it's been six days since the storm made landfall and nonprofits say help is still needed since this storm hit less than a week ago. Hundreds of volunteers from San Antonio have traveled to southeastern Texas to help in the aftermath. Nonprofits across the state are trying to recruit more volunteers to staff shelters, serve food and stock supplies, but they say they need more support from San Antonio. It's going to be months of work. Um, next year, there's still going to be stuff done. I, I can guarantee it. The loss of power means there's little relief from the heat for hundreds of thousands of people in the Houston area. The city's hospitals say they're seeing triple the usual amount of heat related illnesses. Centerpoint Energy says power should be restored to most of Houston households by tomorrow. And now there's a couple ways you can help. First off, the Houston Food Bank has set up a disaster relief fund and they're accepting monetary donations. That money will go towards food, water, and other necessities that people are lacking right now. So once this crisis has passed, the food bank will use the rest of the money for helping those in need throughout Southeast Texas. If you'd like to get involved on the ground, there's a few avenues for that as well. The Red Cross is asking for volunteers to help them in their efforts. All you need to do is sign up on the Red Cross Texas Division website. And if you're handy with a chainsaw, Texans on a mission are asking for volunteers to help clear fallen leaves, excuse me, trees, limbs across Southeast Texas. They ask that you fill out the request form on their website. And you can find the links to all of these resources and more. Just head to our website, ksat.com. Remember that every little bit helps. Topping your morning headlines, if you're an AT&T customer, Listen up, a third party illegally downloaded data from almost every single AT&T customer. This happened back in 2022, but it was only until this week that the company learned there was a breach at all. So AT&T says this affects 109 million customers, but the hackers didn't get sensitive information like social security numbers and birthdays. Now AT&T promises to notify every customer that has been impacted it's also reporting that the breach has been closed. AT&T, by the way, was also breached earlier this year. That isn't a completely separate incident. In this case, hackers accessed sensitive information of 73 million current and former AT&T customers. Meanwhile, actor Alec Baldwin's manslaughter trial has ended after a judge dismissed the case yesterday. 
Baldwin's defense filed the motion to dismiss after claiming that live ammunition evidence collected at the scene of the shooting was concealed from them. This stems back to the October 2021 death of Russ cinematographer Helena Hutchins, who was accidentally shot by Baldwin during filming. The movie's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, is serving 18 months in prison for the incident. And looking ahead to next week, the Republican National Convention kicks off Monday in Milwaukee. Over 50,000 people will be there, including 2,500 delegates that are expected to attend the political event. The delegates will choose their presidential and vice presidential nominees during the four-day event. Former President Donald Trump is a current presumptive nominee. He is expected to announce his pick for vice president there. We'll be streaming the convention on all of our streaming platforms starting at 9 p.m. Monday night. The Democratic National Convention will be held on August 19th through the 22nd. 606 and 75 degrees. Still ahead, a pair of British influencers stopped in the Alamo City to get a taste of Texas. We'll show you how the KSAT Night team introduced them to some of the Tex-Mex favorites. And coming up, a number of products you might see on the shelves and online are under recall this morning. Stephanie Serna tells us what's good and what's bad. That's next. 75 degrees. Look at that, it's beautiful out there. You know, it's funny, if you're not from the area and you're wondering why we're celebrating like something like 93 degrees, Sarah Spivey's gonna break that down and show you comparison of our temps from last year when we come back. Welcome back. The Consumer Product Safety Commission has a few recalls you need to be aware of, which includes some children's sleepwear. Stephanie Serna has a list. On the top of the list of things to look out for are these children's pajama sets sold exclusively on Timu.com by Juvenile Kids. The problem is they pose a risk of burn injuries to children. If you have them, don't let your kids use them and contact Juvenile Kids for a full refund. A kid's nightgown is also posing a burn hazard. It was also sold on Timu.com, but by Lovely Angel. If you have this item, contact the seller for a full refund. And at many stores in our area, you may already notice fall items on the shelves. And at Claire's and Icing stores, there is a recall on their Halloween witch hats, which can pose a risk of burn injuries to anyone who uses it. In this case, you are advised to return the recalled hat to any Claire's or Icing stores for a full refund. And if you've been shopping at Ross, be aware of this festive summer armchair. The armchair's leg can bend or break, posing fall and injury hazards. You can return these chairs to any Ross store for a full refund or a $50 store credit. And one last kid's pajama set sold on Timu. These are also posing a risk of burn injuries to children. For this, you need to contact Fashion Online for a full refund. And those are your recalls ahead of the weekend. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Sarah, yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, my husband and I went for like a bike ride at like 3.30 and it was 87 yeah, degrees. Not that bad. I was like, this is so nice. I know, and today's gonna be another day where, you know, we're really not gonna have to worry about the heat. The only thing that might come your way during the weekend is, is a shower to bring it on. But also we <laughs> need the rain. So yeah, it's okay. Now compare this to last year. I want to show you Sarah and everybody at home. Look at your screen. This is what we were dealing with last year. Ooh. For highs. 106 today. That was the high temperature last year. Mm. In fact, it was a record and it kind of was a streak of 103 to 106 degree day highs for a while, for over a week. Now compare that to this year, okay? This is a look at this year's forecast from July 13th to July 19th. Today, we're gonna be some 15 degrees cooler than how we were this time last year. And even into the week when we see our high pressure system move overhead, it's not gonna be too bad. You don't see any triple digits there in that forecast. So again, nice improvement. And the reason for that is we have had some recent rains and the recent rains keep parts of the soil pretty moist. Now we're still under drought, but you can see in the last five days, there really has been a good smattering of rainfall all over South Central Texas. Now it has varied. Take a look closer to San Antonio. There have been pockets of two to three inches of rain on the northwest side, pockets of two to three inches of rain on the south side of Bear 
County, uh, but even around uh, around San Antonio itself, you can see there's been some folks that have missed out on a good amount of rain near the SeaWorld area. We've really only seen about a quarter of an inch of rain in the last five days. Alamo Heights only about half an inch of rain. That includes the airport, only half an inch of rain, but that doesn't tell the whole story because areas near China Grove have seen about three inches of rainfall. So this kind of these kinds of random downpours in the afternoon where it's going to be luck of the draw is going to be the case today too. As you look ahead to the future cast, you can see it's during the peak heat of the day. So we're talking 2 to 7 p.m. that will see a few pop up showers and storms develop. Now we're not anticipating any severe weather, but if you do happen to get a storm, you can expect like what we have over the last couple of days pockets of heavy rain and even some lightning. And it's important to note that when thunder roars, you should go indoors on the weekend. So keep that in mind. Uh, after the sun sets, we're going to see our rain chances go down for the day. And then rain chances are going to be fewer and far between in the next couple of days. It's 75 degrees in San Antonio, 76 in New Braunfels. Del Rio, good morning. It's 76 degrees, 70 in Bernie and 73 in Kerrville. Here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Mainly cloudy today, mostly cloudy today, a 20% chance for a passing shower this morning. And then after about 12 o'clock, that's when we'll start to see a few showers and storms. Notice temperatures are likely going to stay in the 80s regardless of if you get rain. 83 at noon for the afternoon high in San Antonio, around 90 degrees. Southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then looking at high temperatures around the area, honestly, so much better than this time last year. It's only going to be 86 in Kerrville, only 92 in Del Rio. 92 in Catula, 93 in Gonzales, and 93 in Pleasanton. Now, while we're dealing with relatively mild weather, there's heat advisories across a good portion of the nation, Midwest, down toward Louisiana, and also out toward the West where there's excessive heat warnings. Take a look at the forecast heat index values across the nation. Believe it or not, San Antonio is going to be one of the cooler spots on the map today. It'll be feeling like 102 in Wichita, feeling like 101 in Charlotte, feeling like 108 in New Orleans. Orleans and 110 in Phoenix, Arizona, all because of that heat high. Now that heat high is going to inch closer to us in the coming days, keeping out our rain chances, but it's not going to move right over Texas. And so that means that here in San Antonio, our rain chances, yes, they'll go down in the coming days, but temperatures should only rise to at most about 96 on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then here's the, the fun news. It does look like we could see additional rain chances by Thursday and Friday of this upcoming Ooh. week. Yeah, that's because because a weak front is going to stall out. So we're we're kind of in a good weather pattern here where it's not too hot. Uh, so kind of like Goldilocks weather and we have an opportunity for rain. Now, if we could have widespread rain, that would be great, but it's going to kind of be hit or miss. And Sarah, I do got to mention Saharan dust will be in the air this weekend. I'll have details about that coming up in about 10 minutes or so. Oh my gosh, I love seeing the constant like, oh, you know, next weekend we might have more of a cool. I love it. Keep yeah, it it's coming. nice to see. I think we all have some major trauma from last summer. Oh, your last summer was so hot. It was brutal. Thank you, Sarah. It is 616, 75 degrees. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, six, zero, zero, fireball nine, daily four, seven, eight, seven, four, fireball three. Cash five, six, nine, 13, 25, 33. And in your Mega Millions, 15, 35, 48, 53, 68, Mega Ball 8, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. Do you know Josh and Jace? Well, they're British social media in influencers, and they have been making their way through America. And that included a stop right here in San Antonio at KSAT, where our own Steve Spreester and Myra Arthur had a taste test waiting. Check it out. Talk about your adventures so far, and where did you get this idea? Like, we're going to go across the country. Yeah, well, I mean, we started in uh, we started in South Carolina about four trips ago, and now we realize our biggest audience is in Texas, and here we are in San Antonio. These are all what we would call Mexican candies okay. or spices, okay. and this one right here, I want to start with the one that's San Antonio. This is from the Alamo Candy Company, Ooh, okay. the Great Taste of Texas, made in San Antonio. It's Chamoy. Chamoy. It's sweet, it's spicy, it's like a, it can be savory too, it can go on all kinds of things. Made from fruit. I'm the yeah. guinea pig. Here we go. Yeah, we'll do that. 
Can you explain what you're tasting, right? <laughs> it's got a kick, guys. It does have a kick. Go you on. could no. put that on like any candy you can think of. You wouldn't put this on candy, surely. You, you, know, you can't fruit? put that on really? any candy. Fruit. You, can. you could put it in drinks. Okay, Joy so see? Thing. Fruit. Watermelon. <laughs> Would that go on that or not? It is on it. It's really good. You like it? Mmm. These are also no, like these. made in San Antonio. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So made in San Antonio, but called Chinese yeah. candy. Yes. Chinese candy. Dried salt Guys, plums. what is that? What is that? Why does it look like that? <laughs> Bombs up, mate. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be disrespectful. I don't want to be disrespectful. Why is it salty? That dehydrates you. I need water. Here we go. We need a redemption, guys. Good. Cherry bombs. Cherry bombs. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Better? Good Are they better? Yeah. Oh, they, okay. That's good. Best one so far. I'll take, I'll take another one. Oh, yeah, that's good. What are you looking forward to most on the rest of your trip? Um, we're Expanding gonna... our taste buds for one. Got a lot of stick on lime because oh, I ate, ate a taco yeah. in the middle. Breakfast you taco. Yes. I'm sorry. You ate a taco oh, in the middle? middle? I'm sorry. I need to do a public apology because... I think so. This is it. How? Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I am so sorry to all my Texans out there that I ate a taco in the middle. I'm genuinely really, really sorry. Who starts in the middle of a taco? I'm sorry, okay? Don't come for me, all right? <laughs> So funny. At least he is so honest. I, I saw that video of the, him, you know, the internet really gave him a hard time about eating the taco in the middle. In the middle, that's pretty bad. And, and just, it's taco. Taco. The taco in the middle. But you know, if you actually eat a taco in the middle, you're getting like the best bite. Maybe that's what he was going I, for. I mean, maybe, you know. I've never tried it. Neither have I, Sarah. <laughs> I do love cherry bombs. Oh, I love cherry bombs. And what, do you like Chinese candy? They're okay. Yeah. I, I don't spit them out. That would be disrespectful. But that was just a sneak peek of Josh and Jason's visit to San Antonio. You can see their whole story on our KSAT YouTube page. Yeah, I believe Myra and Steve taught them how to properly eat a taco. Good. Instead of in the middle. Good. Welcome. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was nice. They stopped by. That is. All right. So the time is 622 at 75 degrees. The James Webb Telescope has taken some crazy cool pictures in the last two years. So coming up, I'll tell you the story behind this amazing picture that was recently released by NASA. Welcome back. Okay, so take a look at this. NASA is celebrating the two-year anniversary of the James Webb Telescope with the release of a new vivid photo. The image shows a pair of intertwined galaxies, which NASA calls, this is cute, the penguin and the egg. Oh, that is cute. It, look, it does <laughs> it look does like, look a, like penguin. a penguin and then the little egg there. No. The galaxies <laughs> first passed each other tens of millions of years ago which means that the light you're seeing there is tens of millions of years old, causing the new star formation that you see within the penguin. NASA says the galaxies are about the same mass, which is why one hasn't consumed the other. The $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope first started taking images in July of 2022. And for pics like this, you know what? I'd say it's worth the money. Okay, so. That galaxy that's far, far away, it has planets in it, correct? Yeah, most definitely. So there could be creatures on these planets? We don't um, know. We don't know. We don't know. Aliens. Sarah likes to <laughs> always bring up aliens with me. Because she doesn't believe in them. That is not true. Yes, she's not a believer. That is not true. I'm a believer. All right, it's 627 and 75 degrees. Get ready for the greatest show on Earth. We'll show you what to expect at the Alamo Dome this weekend. And the number, they don't lie. San Antonio is one of the top tourist destinations in Texas. We're going to break it down for you next. Good morning. It's 630 on this Saturday. So just a little behind the scenes. Yeah. There's this TikTok trend that's going around that says every girl can relate. They're either a Barbie, an American girl, a brat stall or Polly Pocket. And so we were kind of doing, I'll post it on social yeah. media later on KSAT. Um, so we asked some of the women in the KSAT newsroom, which one do you relate to? It's not what you played with as a child. It's kind of your attitude. It's which one that represents you best. Right. So Sarah's a brat stall, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> and she says that I'm Polly Pocket. She's a poster child, Polly Pocket. I don't, 
like I'm quirky, like I'm like You're a not little, really put together. Little like, burst of energy and with a lot of spunk. All right. Well, let's go. start our forecast by talking about how there's going to be some Saharan dust out there this weekend, but it's going to be a light to moderate plume, so it's really not going to cause too much issues out there peaking on Monday. Uh, again, it creates colorful sunsets. If we had a very dense plume overhead, it might cause some allergy issues. But again, the plume is going to be light to moderate. So the weekend air quality forecast is just moderate, which is means that not many people are going to be affected by it allergy wise. If you're struggling with your allergies, it's probably because of the molds out there. Outside right now, we're seeing the first light of the day. You can see there's plenty of clouds out there too this morning. It's mostly cloudy in 75. Uh, northeast winds at about five miles per hour. 73 in Kerrville, 75 in Del Rio, 75 in Catula, and 76 in Beeville. Now today, like the last couple of days, we're going to have a few downpours, mainly in the afternoon from about 1 p.m. to about 5 p.m. That's the chance for a few showers and storms. And again, just like the last couple of days, it'll be hit or miss. Some people will miss out. Some people will get the rain. That's just the nature of the forecast for the day today. But hey, it's something, and it's going to help to keep our temperature temperatures down this weekend. I'm going to have details on your forecast and walk you through hour by hour coming up in just a bit. Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. And it's probably the last thing you want to hear about. I know Sarah Spivey doesn't, but those closures on I-10 and Loop 1604, they are back this weekend. TxDOT closed a number of roads in and around Loop 1604 and I-10. This is on the city's northwest side at 9 p.m. last night, and they won't open up until early Monday morning. So if you use that route often, plan for traffic and find another route if you can. We have a full breakdown of the closures and their impacts on your drive at ksat.com. So we're continuing to see the fallout in Marion after the city's former mayor and city secretary resigned in the same week. Now it's being felt by residents. One woman says she isn't able to shower, wash clothes, or even uh, wash her hands at home without sewage coming up the pipe. Zaria Oates tells us how just when the problem was about to be fixed, the only two people listed on the city's bank accounts resigned. And now she is hoping the city of Marion can help her. Let's fix it. This is Helen Gunther. Smell the sewer? You smell it now? Uh, yeah. She's lived in her Marion home for 30 years, but says the last four months have been frustrating. Oh, face. This is my dishwasher. Look what it looks like. Gunther sewage is backing up into her home. It's preventing her from regularly showering, drinking tap water, doing the dishes, and washing clothes. And it's the most horrifying smell. It just it makes you sick to your stomach. The issue began after work was done at a home next to Gunther's. The home was connected to the same sewer line. After a new owner bought that home, they hired a contractor to cap the line because sewage was backing up onto the property. So you're the contractor. You capped that off. Yeah, because then I called the city, letting them know after a month and a half, she's not responding. The tying of sewer lines together is now illegal in Marion. However, when the lines were tied together more than 30 years ago, it was allowed. Marion Mayor Pro Tem Abigail Mayberry says that means it's been grandfathered in. Gunther says she has never spoken with the contractor, and the contractor says she was never able to get a hold of Gunther. But according to the city, this contractor should not have been doing any work in Marion. That contractor was actually not permitted to be working in the city of Marion. With Gunther being on a fixed income, the city says it's trying to fix the situation by possibly paying the cost up front to place a new line. We were just about there with being able to try to schedule somebody to come out so that the city could absorb that cost and then just pass it back on to her in small increments, you know, as an added bill when um, unfortunately all of this began to occur in the city. All of this being the former city mayor and secretary resigning in the same week while being the only two people listed on the city's bank accounts, making it impossible for the city of Marion to write any checks for contracted work. Now everything is at a standstill. The contractor we spoke to, he can't have any any extra work done for the next two and a half weeks. But Gunther's problem started before the resignations. To go through this because some new people come in and want to buy, you know, that's not right. 
For now, there's a no work order placed on the property where Gunther's sewer was capped off. The city is working to reroute her sewer line to another location. However, they can't do that until the city figures out its banking issues. Zaria Oates, KSAT 12 News. Sorry, I hope that all gets resolved. OK, so this weekend, the Alamo Dome will play host of the greatest show on Earth, courtesy of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey. Avery Everett has a sneak peek of what you can expect inside the Big Top. Come one, come all to one of the greatest dome shows of all. The Ringling Bros and Barnum and Bailey are here in San Antonio with performance times through the weekend. We're going to show you a look inside to see what's ahead for the weekend. We have over 50 acts throughout the show. Uh, we have 18 different countries represented. It's a lot of never been seen before acts. It's really cool. We have a 360 degree stage where we have three different acts that happen at the same time. So you can actually come here three times and see it three different ways. Ways, and every single time you see it, you see something different that you've never seen before. The best part of what I do is being able to see the faces on the kids and how it lights up like they can relate to it. You know, everybody's ridden a bike at one point or another throughout their lives. And the fact that we get to perform and do some really cool tricks for everybody is what I enjoy the most. For ticket information and more about the show, you can head on over to KSAT.com. Avery. Very cool. So we have a lot going on today, but one thing you're probably not looking forward to is maybe a little bit of heat. Luckily, the San Antonio Botanical Gardens wants to help you and the family cool off today. So they're hosting the Celebrate Water event where families can cool off in the No Name Creek. <laughs> There'll also be plenty of other fun and educational activities for the kids. The event runs from 9 this morning until 1 in the afternoon. It's kind of like a splash pad for kids. Tickets are $22 per adult and $15 per child. Kids under 3 get in for free. Always fun and a good splash pad for the kiddos. It's 638 and 75 degrees. You know, it's, def it's like a, it's a splash pad day every day in the summer here in San Antonio. But Sarah Spivey says it's not going to reach those triple digit temps that we used to seeing last year this weekend. She'll explain when we come back. The Alamo City has two of the most popular tourist attractions in the state, and we have the data to prove it. So check this out. The Texas Real Estate Source ranked the top attractions in the state by going through Instagram pics to find out which ones had the most used hashtags. So here's the top 10. You see right here at number one is our San Antonio Riverwalk. That's awesome with 168,000 posts using the hashtag San Antonio Riverwalk. At number four is the Alamo with 144,000 posts using hashtag the Alamo. Rounding out the top five are the Houston Zoo, AT&T Stadium in Arlington, and Lady Bird Hike and Bike Trail in Austin. As for the rest of the top 10, we have the Fort Worth Stockyards, the Dallas Arboretum. Oh, they get a lot. It's beautiful, especially when they do the pumpkin display in October. Um, okay, Padre Island National Seashore. That is, we call it Pins and Corpus, Christy. <laughs> it's my favorite beach ever. The Dallas Zoo. And finally, go Astros, Minute Maid Park in Houston. So if anyone tells you there's nothing to do in the Alamo City, go ahead and show them the facts. I will say this too, it's actually quite fun even as a San Antonio native to take one of those bo boat tours. I yeah. really like them. We forget about the Riverwalk. When you live here, I feel like you really never venture down there. Yeah. And I feel as locals, we should because it's it's beautiful. There's great parts of it too that are outside of, you know, the touristy section right. where it's absolutely gorgeous. And of course, I always like to take my friends and family who visit to the missions because they're usually a lot quieter. The missions other than the Alamo, right. they're usually a lot quieter and it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Um, going in the summer though, there's not a lot of shade and that part yeah. of the Riverwalk is a little tough. The fall and the spring are a little better. But today, if you go early enough. Yeah, and try to avoid the afternoon hours because that's when we could see some rain. So, so far this year, we've had 12 100 degree days, which is a lot. 
but compared to last year by this time we had 19 at this point and 2022 we had a lot of 100 degree days in May and June and we had 35 100 degree days by this time last year. So again so far this year we're doing okay and I don't anticipate any triple digits this weekend or for most of next week. Here's a look at your weekend forecast today. There's a 40% chance for you to see rain in your backyard. A few showers and storms will develop in the afternoon. Tomorrow, less of a chance, but it's going to only be 93 degrees. And again, today only 90 for the high. Take a look at some of these pictures sent in through our KSAT Connect feature on our, our weather app and online. And you can see just this is kind of the picture we've been dealing with over the last couple of days. Spotty showers and storms throughout the day. This was a great picture sent in out near Kerrville. Take a look at rainfall comparisons from the start of the year to July 13th. And I'm looking at the last couple of years here. You can see other than 2021, we've had pretty dry years recently. 2020, 2022, we only had five inches of rain by this point uh, that year. And we're even outpacing last year with rainfall. So even though we're slightly below the average for the amount of rain we should have by this time this year, it's looking pretty good for this year so far. We could always use more because we're under a drought, so we need more rain. There is that possibility later on today. Temperatures right now 75 in San Antonio, 75 in Del Rio, 70 in Rock Springs, 76 in Gonzales, 75 in Catula, and 78 in Eagle Pass. Looking at your radar, there are some areas of light rain showers this morning, mainly out near Stockdale and in Wilson County, as well as in Gonzales County. These are just your light rain showers, light sprinkles, out near Hallettsville too. As we are, are around San Antonio, the better chance will be during the peak heat of the day. A lot of times these summertime showers and storms are fueled by the daytime heat, and so we need some of that daytime heat first for these to develop, and that shows here on the future cast. Anytime from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., that's the best chance for a few showers and isolated storm. No severe weather today, but like the last couple of days, if you do get a rain shower, it could produce heavy rain at times and even some lightning. So 20% this morning, mostly cloudy this afternoon, where we'll get up to about 40% chance for showers and storms. Temperatures are going to be great today, only near 90 degrees for the high in San Antonio. It'll only be in the upper 80s in the hill country, so pretty nice in those higher elevations. 89 in Uvalde, 91 in Seguin, and 91 in New Braunfels. That upper level heat high is going to move a little bit closer, keeping us dry in the coming days, but it's not going to move directly overhead. So when you're looking at the seven day forecast, yes, we'll have have less of a rain chance in the coming days, but highs will be manageable in the mid to upper 90s with better rain chances Thursday and Friday. We'll be back with more news after the break. Well, SA Live just found your new favorite Italian restaurant. It's family owned and it's really a hidden gem, serving pizza, pasta, brunch and handcrafted cocktails. Jen Tobias Streski takes us inside Renzo's on the far north side. <music> Whether you're looking for pizza, pasta, brunch, or craft cocktails, Renzo's got you covered here. It's a family atmosphere vibe at this Northwest Side restaurant. We're going to go inside and get a taste of the menu. I hope you're hungry because here at Renzo's, they have laid out the whole spread. I mean, we've got brunch, lunch, and dinner for us. And let me tell you, my mouth is watering. I'm here with Miguel Saiz, the general manager at Renzo's. and. Wow, that's all I can say. This is beautiful. First, let's talk about Renzo's. Tell me more about this place. So Renzo's is an Italian concept. Um, we went and got the flavors of Italy and brought them here to San Antonio. Um, we wanted to bring some traditional flavors um, back to San Antonio. So when we were looking at it, we want food is all about bringing people together, yes. right? Bringing people to the table, uh, community, um, family, and being around the table and just socializing. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to bring those comfort foods to San Antonio to offer a place where people can feel invited, mm -hmm. um, a great atmosphere with a modern and contemporary feel um, with authentic you know, Italian cuisine as well. This is, a, I feel like this is a hidden gem because how long have you guys been open? We're about nine months now. Okay, so not even a year. If you haven't been, let's talk food now because wow, uh, brunch, obviously a lot of options. Definitely, so we do have a, a, a extensive brunch option uh, menu that's gonna run on Saturdays and Sundays. We have everything from steak and eggs to French toast and eggs in purgatory. Beautiful. Okay, this one you said is a favorite right here. Fan favorite right here is gonna be our grilled sirloin with uh, an egg, uh, demi gravy, 
and grilled vegetables. So that's going to be a fan favorite right there for on a brunch menu. The presentation is beautiful. <laughs> okay, you. you also have some great lunch deals. Yeah, definitely. So we have a play on a, a chicken parmesan. Uh, over here is going to be a prosciutto wrapped uh, chicken breast with uh, mozzarella. We have our fettuccine with Bianca sauce and marinara on it. Um, and then we have different sandwiches, baguettes, mostly going to be a meatball and a chicken parmesan sandwich as well. And you compare those, I see, with either a salad. You got some potatoes here that look Correct. delicious. Yes, so you. got the greens going on as <laughs> well. Uh, I see a charcuterie over there, so someone can enjoy that maybe with some craft cocktails too. Right? Definitely. So we, that does pair with our craft cocktails, or we have a, a great uh, wine option, wine list, uh, some classic Italian wines on there. Uh, everything from Chianti's to some Napa Valley wines as well. So that's a great option if you want to come in and just grab a bite to eat during happy hour with a, a cocktail or a wine. And then you also have your dinner, which includes the pizza. I mean, pizza really is great anytime, <laughs> right? That's right. So we do run our pizza options and our pizza menu all day, every day. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have it on our, our dinner menu, menu as well. And we have everything from salmon, um, cacio e pepe, which is a classic Italian dish, uh, to a tuna steak, anything that everything a little something for everybody yes so some seafood and some really creative looking pizzas what would you say is the favorite the most ordered on the menu so our renzo's pizza is going to be probably the, the most favorite it's going to be almost like a meat lover's pizza it's going to have a uh, prosciutto pepperoni and uh, uh chorizo espanol so spanish chorizo on it wow. Okay, and then that one over there with the salmon, is that salmon on that pizza? Yeah, that's going to be a smoked salmon pizza with a cream spinach uh, base. So it's a little play off of a, almost like a lox, but pizza style. Yo, what do people need to know if they want to come dine here? So if you want to come and dine here, we are on uh, 4323-1604, West Loop 1604, um, right in the parking lot of Living Spaces. Okay, that's all you need to know. Come check it out. There's a nice patio outside and please come hungry. Look at all of this. Even if you want to go light with the salad or split a pizza, charcuterie board, they've got it all. And like you said, wine too, right? That's right. Wine as well. We do, do live music um, Wednesdays through Saturday evening from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. as well. They're going to be local artists here, mostly jazz. Okay, so... And that just makes it even better. So you've got music too. Thank you so much, Miguel. I don't know which one I'm going to try. Maybe everything. Maybe from, everything. Yes, for more information, <laughs> you can head to our website, salive.com. Click the As Seen on SA Live tab. Now I Want Pizza, SA Live airs weekdays at 1 p.m. on KSAT 12. Scan the QR code. There it is. Got it right this time. <laughs> for more arts, culture, food, and fun around San Antonio. It's 655 and 75 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America after we take a look outside with the roads. No incidents. If anything does pop up, we'll let you know about it. Talk to me about this dish and some of the ingredients you're using. So we have a really beautiful corn and celery puree. We have those smashed potatoes, a little bit of heat from the chili oil, and sous vide and grilled octopus. There's enough to go around. So <laughs> shareable, craveable dishes. This is a fan favorite. I love that flavor. A little bit crispy on the outside. From the grill. Super tender on the inside. From the sous vide, absolutely. This is fun, it's delicious, and I love the different flavors on there, the oil and everything. Honestly, I would just order that, but I'll share it if you come yeah. out with me. It's a double cheeseburger. When you talk about smash burger style, yeah. this is what you want. <laughs> so craveable, right? The meat, super crispy on the outside and just seasoned to perfection. Absolutely insane. Yum. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the forecast. 40% chance today for a few showers and storms, mainly between 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Only 90 for the high temperature today. Tomorrow, only 93, but less of a rain chance, only 20%. And then looking ahead, we're going to dry out Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday with highs in the upper 90s. Then by Thursday and Friday, it does look like we'll have another weak front that can kind of give us the same weather pattern we've been dealing with the last couple of days, where we'll have a few pop-up showers and storms in the afternoon. So not your typical mid-July forecast with triple-digit weather. So that is a nice and welcome change. Of course, I'll have more coming up at 8. Love seeing 90 degrees as the high. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Hey, don't go anywhere. We'll be back here at 8 a.m.